I want to start this video off by being abundantly clear on the fact that I am by no means the expert or the master of the information I hope to present to you all via this video. I believe, I live under the mantra that there is nothing new under the sun. And I'm not going to reinvent the wheel if the wheel has already been made. I'm simply going to build upon the blueprint. You know, I'm going to build upon, I'm going to make advances in the foundation that have been left before us by our ancestors based off of the philosophers of old and such, right? So a lot of the information, I actually got the book right here. A lot of the information from this video came mostly in part from this book right here, Three Magic Words by U.S. Anderson. You know, moving forward, you're going to hear me echoing a lot of the ideas and concepts from this book. You know, here you go. That's the information. I'm giving information out for free 99. There's nothing unique about the information I know. I'm just a student of the game, just like the rest of y'all. I'm another kid in a different class. I learned some cool stuff, and I want to come share it with y'all. Now, this conversation is going to include words like God, universal consciousness, universe, source, whatever. If at any time I use words that don't resonate with you, crazy idea, switch them. Make them something that makes sense to you because this is your experience. This is your story. You know, don't, don't discount information because of one word. Someone called it God. Someone called it source. Someone doesn't know that it's this and that. Oh my God, what they're saying is useless. No, come on, man. This is higher level conversations here. You should know, I shouldn't have to explain that to you. You know, make the thing make sense to you. Some of the things that I'm going to be uh, uh, referring to from this book, I'm going to say in a different order because that's what makes sense to me. You'll hear me say it, then you'll go read the book. You'll go, oh, that, that Professor MBS guy, he, he said it's backwards. He, he got it wrong. No, it just it makes more sense for me to explain it in this way, right? So what I hope to get over to y'all in this video is how do thoughts become things? A quick preface. And then I'll let you know when we're actually getting started. You guys know that I talk about manifestation a lot on this video because everything comes from the mind. How does, for example, the manifestation of a lemon in, into my life, right? How does the idea, the thought of a lemon begin to magnetize either the limit or a whole bunch of circumstances for me to get the limit into my life how do how does all this stuff get put into motion based off of something that i'm thinking well there's 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 levels to this right for example we're going to use words like the subconscious mind once again we haven't gotten started yet just giving you a little bit of a preface to get your mind primed for this type of stuff right when you are visualizing something to the point of emotional thrill when you feel something to be true, when you use like these little religious words, quote, quote, religious words, such as faith and belief in something, you begin to vibrate at the frequency of your belief. I mean, if you believe you're rich, I mean, your physical reality says that you are rich. Therefore, you are vibrating at a vibration, a frequency of wealth and abundance. If you are always late on bills, if, you're, if you feel poor, if you're always looking at what the next guy has next to you, what frequency are you operating at? You see what I'm saying? So based off of what's going on in your mind, based off of what's going on, based off of your frequency, you attract certain outcomes and things into your world. What people still do not realize is that a lot of people say, I'll, uh, when I see it, I'll believe it. We have already stated this multiple times that it's the exact opposite. What you believe is what you will see. Simple example, and I might come back to this one, but simple example. Actually, you know what? Let's get started. You know, I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to come back to that. Let's get started. Y'all know me. I'm random. I have 18,000 things in my head I want to say at the same time, so hopefully I don't lose it. Let's get started. They always say that scientists say that we only use 10% of our brain. First of all, who are these scientists? That's just the first question. Who are these sci scientists say? Well, I mean, I'm an environmental scientist, so if I say something, can I say scientists say? Just, just throwing that out there. But scientists say that we only use 10% of our brain. For the sake of this example, let's go with it. And for the following, these numbers are going to be very arbitrary. Okay, Scientists say we use 10% of our brain. I think they're partially right, but I want to use, I want to, uh, 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 what's the word? I want to substitute the word brain for mind. 
right? What's the difference, some may ask. Let me explain it to you, at least from my understanding. The brain is the physical. Like I said, the physical is the last thing that manifests. This is the lowest, the densest level of our perception, right? What we can see, feel, touch, experience with our senses. So our brain is just a physical clump of cells. I mean, of course, there's a neuron pathways, all that type of stuff. Yeah, I get that. But for the sake of this conversation, this is just a physical clump of cells. This is the physical thing that translates everything that's going on in the immaterial realms, right? If we didn't have our brains, we would not be able to process all of the frequencies and energies that are coming down either from literally the universe or from within ourselves. And, and when we have these external uh, these external events and things, our brain is what turns that universal code into something we can experience. Like in the matrix, when you see those scrolling numbers and stuff, when they see the scrolling characters, they don't see X's and O's, ones and zeros. They see the image, the, like they, they see the people walking around. They see the bullets, they see the fighting, they see the, the conversation. That's what they see when they see those scrolling characters. That's what our brain does. Our brain deciphers that and gives us a cucumber, gives us a lemon, gives us a water bottle, right? That's what our brain does. That's its purpose. So when they say we use 10% of that, let me go ahead and contradict myself. I don't think we use 10% of our brain. I think we use 100% of our brain, even if we're conscious of it or unconscious of it, which leads us to our point. The mind. I believe that we may use 10% of our minds. The mind is an immaterial space. The mind does not exist in the physical, but it runs parallel with it, you know, and maybe even intertwines it with it, but it's nothing physical about the mind. The mind, and you've probably heard this before, can be broken down into the conscious and subconscious. That's the mind. So we got the brain, we got the, I'll kind of overlap them, we got the mind, and then there's going to be one more level that, that interacts with all these. But once again, this might be a long video, so bear with me. The mind is broken down to conscious and subconscious mind. That conscious mind, I do believe, would be the 10%. Mind you, these numbers are arbitrary. But I believe that to be the 10% that we utilize. This is just the one that just processes what's going on around us. It keeps our bodies moving, keeps this vessel that we have moving around, and it translates what we're doing. The mind, the conscious mind, is the mind part that allows you to, uh, to enjoy what's going on in the brain. That's why we only use, we only need a little bit of that little infinite and just put it there so we can enjoy what we've manifested in the physical. The rest of the stuff happens behind the scenes, right? Like the example I was about to give, the subconscious mind can be looked at as prompters, right? So when people are on the news, they're reading the prompters, that's what they believe. Now what happens if everything on that prompter was true, but you forgot to turn it off? So everything that it's saying is just running in the back of your head, forming your belief system, right? So what's the difference between the person that is growing their wealth, they're learning new ways to make money, they're learning stocks, they're learning real estate, they're learning cars, they're learning to even learn to become interested in reading the fine print, right? And then there's a the person over here that blames everybody else for their financial mistakes. You know, oh, this person told me this and I invested in it and I lost all my money. Oh, I can never get a break. Oh, man, why is everything so expensive? Eat the rich. What's the difference in these people's subconscious mind? What prompters are going on in these individuals' minds? This person says, money comes to me easily. As long as, let's just say, for example, I work hard, I work smart, the right things will happen to me that will make the most money for me. This person says, in the back of their mind, Man, I can't ever get ahead. There's always something holding me back. It's somebody else's fault. I can't do it, right? Another example, let's go a little bit lower level with it. You know, race. People will look at me. Some people see me as tall, dark, and handsome, which I, you know, I, I might be a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But they just see me as a regular person, right? They see me as an equal. They see me as such. But then you got people over here based off of the stereotypes, based off of what they've been programmed to believe, Someone has started typing prompters in the back of their head to believe I'm a threat. I'm a thug. I'm a criminal. I'm an idiot. I am, you know, I'm a savage because I'm growing my hair out. These are based off of prompters that these individuals had. 
What's the difference between this person that sees me as tall, dark, and handsome and this person that sees me as a thug? I, either one of them, on, on either side, I'm just existing, walking around, minding my own business, but everybody's prompters funnels in the information, all the feeds, and based off of the prompters running in the back of your subconscious mind, that is what that 10% of your conscious mind gets to observe, right? This is why everyone has their own opinions and things because based off of what's that 90% that's going on in the subconscious mind, based off of their prompters, based off of what they've been chosen to uh, choose to believe, what they've been forced to believe, you can have two completely different paradigms with the same piece of information, with the same thing. That's why when people look at art, some people say, oh man, that reminds me of a time when I was six years old and blah, 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 man. And those th that prompter got activated in their subconscious mind, which allowed them to see that 10%, use their brain to funnel in the information that reminded them of that. Whereas the other person looks at this painting and says like, it's pain, I, I, I don't get it, it's a jar. Why does someone spend $20 million on a picture of a jar? I don't get it. See, two different paradigms, right? So this is why manifestation happens. Because when you impress your subconscious mind, you are now operating from that frequency because that is the new prompter that says, I am rich, I am successful, I am this, I am that, I am this, I am that. But once again, like the kid in the back seat, but yeah, you've explained that, but how does that work? Well, you have to almost go back to the beginning of everything because you, where is the beginning and in infinite? It doesn't really exist, but you got to start somewhere. When we look at birth and death, we realize that birth and death only came after initial consciousness. Just imagine space. You turn the screen off right now. It's just a black screen, right? At some point, this is something that I can't explain yet, but at some point, there was like a little blip. Some people call it the Big Bang. Some people say it was initial thought of God. Doesn't matter. At some point, something happened and something big happened, relatively speaking. There's now a little white dot in this black screen, right? Now, that in this, and we're just, we have to start somewhere, but we're just going to call that the initial consciousness. Now, in this screen, there's this little dot. This little dot is now us. We're now this little dot. Hmm, what more can I be? I see so much around me. I'm conscious of existing, but I want to experience more of myself. What can I do? Oh, it wouldn't it be cool? What would it be like if I did this? And you haven't you heard me say that before? What would life be like if I had whatever it is I wanted to bring into my life? Well, from consciousness comes thought. From thought comes form. Don't we have this term called thought forms? Okay, so from consciousness, there is thought. Hmm, what would, like, what would things be like if I did this? What would things be like if I did that? Now, tell me how this lemon grew. Tell me, came from a seed, right? Kid in the back seed, why, why, how, how? Well, the seed was, it fell into the ground and it got planted and it sprouted. Well, how did it do that? Well, the seed got nutrients and that activated blah, 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 blah. Well, how did it do that? Well, the, I, I don't know. How, do you, how does the seed know how deep to put its roots? How does the seed know how far to expand its roots? How does it know to go from a little seed to, to form a stem, to form leaves? to form? How does it know to do that? Who programmed it to do that in the first place? That's when we get to the third level. Brain, mind, which is broken down into the conscious and subconscious mind. And then we get to the thing that can be open to debate, which is called universal intelligence. God, source of all, the one mind, cap, like, you know, the capital title, the one mind, right? And there's going to be another video I make on that one as well. So at some point, this is where I throw my hands up and I call it God, universal intelligence. Because universal intelligence, God, this all-knowing, omnipotent entity has all of that to a level that we in this third dimension cannot even begin to fathom. So right now, it may be underwhelming to some of you, but how do these things happen? Universal intelligence, because how when you are manifesting, did I use a lemon example already? Like the, the, our neighbor brought us a lemon. We wanted to manifest a lemon. How did you 
Tell your neighbor to come over. When you had this need for a lemon, did you call your neighbor up and the neighbor came to you? Did you, did you have any impact in that? So how did that happen? I started thinking of a lemon and then maybe an hour later, two hours later, a couple days later, weeks later, whatever. At some point that my neighbor came by with this exact thing, they could have they came over to me for a cup of sugar. They could have came over and said, yo, bro, can you turn your music down? They could have came over and said anything in the world. And out of all things, out of infinite, in infinitum, how do you make infinite a noun? Well, anyway, out of the infinite, they had to bring me a limit. What are the chances of that? How did that happen so fluidly based off of my thoughts? Universal intelligence. Okay? Going back to us being a little dot in the, in the, in the blank space, you know, your consciousness was like the initial you being being aware of your existence, not even the physical self yet, but you just being in your existence. You were you were just at some point you were tapping into the universal mind, the universal consciousness, the universal intelligence. Okay, what would like be like if I were a planet? I was something that you know all broken apart, but it's still part of one unit. Well, that's when the solar system forms. Okay, well, how did it know how to make everything orbit around one another? How did it make the sun hot? How did it make, like, you know, like, the, 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 it's the same orbit every single time. It's the same amount of days, weeks, months, years. How did it do that? What scientist made that? At some point, you got to realize that science can't explain everything or we are nowhere near the level of understanding of universal intelligence. Okay? That's how this works. Your thoughts... You don't realize how connected we all are. And I'm getting ahead of myself with another video I want to make, but screw it. We here, you know, you have to realize that we are all connected by that universal intelligence. That is what allows us to create everything it is in our lives. You think we're being cheesy when we say we are creators because we are just a small little fraction of the universal mind that's going out there as one unified consciousness to learn more about itself. We are sent all. Now, I know some people's mission is to save the world and by being by the boom, but we are all sent down from the universal consciousness as a piece of God to say, oh, we're going down here to learn more about ourselves, a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? I learned about as God, as universal intelligence, as one with source. I came down to learn more about myself from this perspective as this, as this flesh, flesh of me called Prince, right? You came down as Tom. You came down as Stacy to learn a little bit now in an ever ever uh, ever expanding understanding of our consciousness, an ever expanding consciousness. What is space doing right now in space? Uh, at least what we've been taught. What is it doing? We are just zipping through space, an infinite like infinite vacuum called space, and we're always expanding. Well, if that is our parent material, the example I've always given, a rock that falls off a mountain is still the same material as the mountain. It just is detached, but it's still the same. We are the same as the universe, constantly expanding, constantly exploring new frontiers. But how, how efficient would it be? And we're just assuming that we are the only life in the universe. But so how efficient would it be if I broke myself down to eight billion different people to learn as much as I could about myself. That's what life is. Everything is a cycle of death and rebirth. Truly, there is no death. There is no permanent death. For example, this goes into my universal consciousness thing. You know, the one mind that we all share a part of. Why do you feel so strongly when somebody dies? Someone that you love passes away. Oh, God, oh. You, they're gone forever. I mean, maybe in the physical. Yeah, you ain't going to be able to dap up your homie no more. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, but are they really gone? You don't realize that our sense of time here is different than what you call heaven. But in the higher dimensions, lower dimensions, our sense of time is different. Where they may have died here, and not to be morbid, I'm using this actually in an uplifting type of way. They've already may have lived five different lifetimes already in the moment of their death. In a completely different scope of time, they've already lived and died like five, ten times. And that's just, I'm throwing arbitrary numbers out there. And you're still stuck on this one. Why? Because you are no longer getting that information from that person. Let's just say like, you know, like for those of you who lost parents and grandparents and stuff like that. You know, it's just like, 
that person's love or like loved ones, significant others that pass away or whatever. It's like that person thought about you. You know, in their free time, they'll be thinking about, damn, man, yeah, I can't, I, I'd be thinking about her. Oh, my God, I be thinking about him. Or you thinking about your mama, your daddy, grandma, grandpa, whatever. I know my parents be thinking about me. I know my grandma and grandpa be thinking about me. You know what I'm saying? But when they disappear, they kind of take that energy with them. Of course, you know, once again, this is a deeper conversation. I go left, right, up, down. But just for this train of thought, you know, they're gone. So now that energy that they've been pinging you with, with their thoughts, is no longer there so that's what you're really missing you're not you don't feel that energetic connection anymore i mean until you realize that death brings people closer to you because they became immaterial it's this physicality that separates us once we lose the physicality we are just nothing but energy you know was it islamic muslim whatever they just say when we die you return to allah like it's like yeah same thing and the bible says from dust to dust if you don't believe we go anywhere else, we all return to the same dirt regardless. We all get buried somewhere. I mean, you don't die and start floating. When, you, when your body dies, when your vessel dies, you go into the ground. We're all the same. and we're, But we're going to talk about that in a different video. But that's just what it is. You ever had that moment where you thought about somebody and you were thinking about them. They just shot you a random text or they called you out of nowhere. Yo, I was just thinking about you because you got a ping. We're all connected by the universal intelligence. So, to summarize all this, the brain, this, this hunk of flesh in our skulls is our brain which helps us process things that are being, it helps us process the 10% of our mind. The 10% of our mind is our conscious mind, the thing that we can mess with, experience, and all that type of stuff. The 90% is what's being created in the background. Right, it's the, 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 the we are living with the 90% loading screen that's always in the back of our head. And when it finally finishes loading, that's when manifestation transpires, okay? The only reason that this happens is because the subconscious mind is gathering resources from the universal mind, the universal intelligence that makes everything happen to the point that I cannot explain it yet. Okay, but it's working in the background for you. So based off of what, okay, and this is how you know everything is linked. Based off of what you are experiencing in your physical, based off of your tiny little brain and your 10% of your mind, you come to conclusions. And just like that little dot in the screen of space, you ask yourself, hmm, what would be nice now? What would be something to experience? What could I do now? So you got, let's just say you're working at Mickey D's, right? S selling your human flesh burgers and horse meat, right? So like, <laughs> so you're selling those things and you say, you know what? I want better for myself. I see myself being the manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm wearing a different shirt. You know what I'm saying? I'm just taking the calls and by being by the boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that. So you start, you start walking around. Sure, you're still flipping them burgers, but your frequency is changing and growing to the fact that you are now the manager. X, Y, Z happens, somebody quits, they need to, they want to promote internally, they see how hard you've been working, you've been promoted to manager, right? How did that happen? By you simply thinking about something, you put the universal law into motion for yourself and that person just randomly quit. They wanted to move to a different location. Something happened in their life, they couldn't do it no more. They blah, 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 blah. You made the right things. Everything happened in this way that we cannot explain. It just kind of happens. I hate, I know some of y'all don't like that. You hate hearing like little half-assed answers like that, but that's as far as I can get. You could probably contribute a little bit more to the conversation, you know, but that's just how it happens, right? So then based off of what we are experiencing in this physical side, the slow part, we then communicate back to our subconscious and the universal consciousness. Okay, I would like to experience this. And then things get set in motion. Now, the things get set in motion based off of the frequency, based off of how truly bad you want something at first, thinking of it, but then you begin to think from it, aka you, you are now the person. You are now walking as if you see how all these things I've been talking about are kind of merging together. It's like, so you're walking as if. When you're walking as if, you're walking in the, in the frequency of whatever it is that you want. Even though your physical reality doesn't say it yet, you know that's already been created in the thought form. Now the thought form has to now form. So that's where the patience is needed. You know, and it's always this thing called divine timing. That's the universe. The space, space, 
other dimensions, higher and lower, do not have one o'clock, two o'clock, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, June, July, August. It doesn't have that. It's just completion. It's pure creation and pure thought. But you have to remember, we've been programmed to believe in time. We've been programmed to believe a linear way of thinking. So it's eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, June, July, August, 2021, 22, 23. So when things take one year, two years, three years, my, you know, I can definitely attest to this, you get impatient. You start to feel like you did something wrong. You feel like creation isn't working for you. But I mean, hold on. Everything I want does inevitably come. When I was living in my last apartment, I saw myself living in a bigger apartment. My goal out there, and I have no problem sharing it with the world. I'm going to be living in a penthouse one day. Sure, oh, you're spiritual. You didn't. No, I'm living in the penthouse. I'm going to look down on everybody, but I did this. This is for me. What's the next step now? But that's just me talking my shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, it's just like, but right now, this apartment that I am in currently is an upgrade. Doesn't that seem like I'm on that thing where it seems like I'm on that path between A and B? Well, if I'm going to accrue wealth, doesn't that mean I need to start making a little bit more money and that eventually gets me to my goal? You see what I'm saying? So now I'm in small, I went from small apart, I went from living at home, living by myself, you know, in my first apartment. Then I moved to my, my apartment that I've made of like 90% of my other videos. And then now I got a newer apartment that was looking more and more like my desired end goal. See, if you're thinking linear time, well, I mean, it's been, you've been looking, thinking about living in this penthouse for four or five, six years. It still hasn't happened. It's taken forever. This manifestation isn't as instant as you said it was. It is instant at that level. But based off of your subconscious and based off of universal events and certain things that have to happen, for a lot of people at a grand scale, a lot of things need to be put in place for this particular manifestation to happen. That's that's universal intelligence. I can't put, I me, I can do a lot, but I can't put together all these events that need to happen. That's universal intelligence. Universal intelligence is the reason why we have a mind, is the reason why we have a brain is a reason why we have physical experiences, right? And it's because we have physical experiences that we learn about our conscious mind, which also shows our balance of the subconscious mind, and we realize the subconscious mind is what gives us everything that we want. So it's a cycle, just like everything else. There's a tree outside. The tree, the leaves are gonna fall, the leaf is going to die, it is going to decompose into the root system of the tree, which helps the tree grow. So is there ever really death or just transformation? That simple question right there can show what your subconscious mind has been programmed to believe. Do you believe in permanent death purgatory or do you believe in reincarnation, recycling, reuse and transformation? I think I've out covered everything. Let me know what you think, you know, till the next one. Peace.